How's it going everyone? Ben here from Augment Guitars and today we're going to be doing a complete setup on the eBay Telecaster build. This is the last step in the process and then this build will be completed so I'm really excited and I can't wait to finish this thing so without further ado let's get into it. Before we start the setup let's tackle something I forgot to do before finish sanding. I like to round the edges of the fretboard over as it helps to give the neck a nice worn in feel. To do this, you can use two different methods. One is to use a small screwdriver to compress the ends of the wood fibers. This is my preferred method. The second method is to use a small sanding stick to sand off the hard edge of the fretboard. We will be using the screwdriver method for this build. Up close, you can see the edge of the fretboard is pretty sharp. These sharp edges decrease the comfort of the neck and don't feel the best while playing. Let me show you how I round these edges over. Using the small screwdriver, I apply a firm amount of pressure and use the middle of the shaft to compress the fibers of the wood. I go back and forth while adjusting the angle of the screwdriver to create the rounded profile. Be sure not to go too far as we don't want to accidentally scratch the fretboard. You will know when you are done when the edges feel smooth and comfortable. If we zoom in again, you can see that the edge has a nice rounded profile to it. That's what we're looking for. Let's continue to do this for the remaining fretboard edges. The edges are all rounded and the neck feels great. I usually do this step right before finish sanding, but it slipped my mind while filming. The first step in our setup process is to refine and install the nut. We are using a pre-made tusk nut for this build, which is about 90% done. We need to refine the edges as they are hanging over a bit as you can see. To mark what material we need to remove, I will be using an X-Acto knife to score a line flush with the side of the fretboard. You can use a pencil for this as well, but the knife gets a little bit closer. Now that we marked the line, let's darken it up with a pencil. Now that we know how much material to take off the sides, let's use some sandpaper to shape up the nut. After I finish radiusing fretboards, I stick the used adhesive sandpaper to my flat workbench surface. This allows me to shape and refine nuts and saddles on a flat level surface. I also use 400 to 2000 grit sandpaper scraps to buff up the nut. Let's start with 220 grit sandpaper to remove the excess material on the sides. When shaping a nut, check frequently to ensure you are not removing too much material. Also remember that we have to sand up to 2000 grit, so leave a bit of excess material on the initial shaping to account for the step up in grits. After looking at the white tusk nut, I decided to go with the black tusk nut instead, as I feel it fits the build a bit better. I went ahead and repeated the shaping process, and we are ready to buff it up to a nice shine. We will start with 400 grit sandpaper. I'm using this nifty nut and saddle vise that I purchased from Stumac. It's basically a different variation of a jeweler's vise. With all grits of sandpaper, we will sand and smooth the edges down to form a natural rounded transition. We don't want any sharp edges that will be uncomfortable while playing. After sanding it up to 2000 grit, let's finish by buffing with this Stumac Preservation Polish on a microfiber towel. I love this stuff as you can use it for cleaning and shining up guitar finishes, nuts, and saddles. You can even use it on guitar cab Tolex and cables, it's great stuff. Sadly, I don't think they make it anymore and this is my last bottle. After buffing, you can see that the nut looks like it came right out of the factory. It has a nice satin look to it. A quick test fit shows that it fits perfectly and there's no excess material hanging off of the ends. We will lightly tap it into place with a fretting hammer which will allow friction to hold it in place. I don't like to glue in this style of nut as they can be a big pain to remove. A little bit of friction is all you need. Now that we have everything in place, let's finally string up the build. 
I'm using a custom set of Stringjoy strings that I put together on their website. I'm going to be setting this guitar up in drop C sharp, and I want it to try a little bit higher tension strings than what I'm used to. These range from 10.5 to 56 on the low E. This is my first time using Stringjoy strings, so let's open them up and see what comes inside. They are nicely packaged and sealed up, which will help prevent possible corrosion. The strings also come in individual envelopes, which can be a little bit of a waste of paper, but I save them and use them for glue and epoxy mixing. With the strings ready to go, let's thread the strings through the ferrules in the bridge saddles. When threading them through the locking tuner posts, position the hole towards the nut and thread the string through. Pull the string tight and then lock down the string with the locking tuner thumb wheel. This will crimp the string between a pin and the top of the string post. Do not cut off any of the excess string at this time. Tune the string up a bit to give it some tension for the next task. Now that all the strings have some tension on them, we can position and install our tusk string trees. For the position, I like to place them around where they're shown in this clip. There's really no definite measurement for this as it all depends on your headstock logo and design. Really, whatever is aesthetically pleasing to you. Just don't place them too far in either direction as you might not get enough or too much downforce behind the nut. Let's detune the strings so we can push down the tree to make a mark with a hole punch. We can then drill out the holes for the mounting screws. Once again, be sure to use the tape depth stop method so you don't accidentally drill through the headstock. Use some wax on the screw threads and install the string trees. Now that the string trees are installed, let's tune the guitar up to drop C sharp. We are officially ready to start a standard setup. The first step in the setup is to check and adjust the neck relief. We will once again be using a notched straight edge for this. We want the neck to have a little bit of relief or up bow, but not too much. You can also set the neck to be dead straight, but it depends on the guitar and the player. If the neck is dead straight, you might get a bit more buzzing towards the lower frets depending on how hard you play and how low the action is. You can see this neck has too much relief after tuning it up to pitch. Let's tighten the truss rod clockwise to straighten the neck until we are happy with the relief. After the adjustment, you can see there is a little bit of relief which is what we want. You can see the small amount of light shining through between the neck and the notched straight edge. After adjusting the neck, we need to fine tune the nut slot depths. Out of the box, this nut was pretty spot on, but a few of the strings were a bit high. To check the depths, hold down the string at the third fret with one hand and tap the string on the first fret with the other. We only want a small amount of space between the fret and the string. If there is no gap, then the slot was cut too low. Let me show you how to deepen the slots. Down tune the string you want to lower at the nut. Grab it and place it in another slot so it is out of the way. Use an old business card behind the nut to protect the wood in case you slip or use too harsh of an angle. I would suggest using something stronger than tape as the files will easily cut through it. We will be using these Hiroshima guitar files I purchased on Amazon about 10 or so years ago. Let's grab the .017 inch file and get to work. When cutting the nut slots, you want to do two things. One is to file at a slight angle as it helps with tuning stability and preventing rattling in the nut slot. 
It also makes a nice transition for the string tree downforce behind the nut, which helps make tuning to pitch smoother. You can also see I'm rocking a bit back and forth, which brings me to the second point. This helps create a rounded bottom to the nut slot, which helps contour to the string better. This can prevent the pops you hear when tuning up or down a string. I am also rocking a bit more back and forth than I usually do, as I need to open up the slot for the 0.018 inch string size. When deepening or adjusting the nut slots, check frequently to ensure you are not going too deep. Even if it takes a bit longer, check often and always. I just finished adjusting all the nut slots and here's the final result. This camera angle seems to exaggerate the gap on the higher strings just a bit. There is a small amount of gap between the fret and the string and it feels great to play. Now that we have the neck and nut fully adjusted, the next task is to set the string action. To do this, we will be using this handy string height gauge to accurately adjust each string's height. It has a few different ways to measure the height, but I like the metric blocks on the top side of the gauge. It is very easy to see where your string height is currently at. Let's zoom in and take a look. The top of the blocks represent the number indicated above. You can see the action is set pretty high right now at about 2.25 millimeters on the low E. The high E is set to about 1.75 millimeters or so. Let's bring these both down to 1.5 millimeters on the low E and 1 to 1.25 millimeters on the high E. On bridges that have individual adjustable saddles, I like to set the high and low E strings first and then use a radius gauge to set the remaining string heights. This way, you can match the radius of the fretboard, which in turn will make the guitar more comfortable to play. To do this, fish the radius gauge beneath the strings and pull it up so it touches all of the strings right by the bridge saddles. We don't want to pull up too hard, just apply a little bit of pressure so that it touches the strings. Adjust the saddles so that all of the strings touch the radius gauge and buzz out when strumming. When all of the strings touch, check the action and adjust if needed. With the action set, we can now work on the final adjustment, the intonation. The intonation is a really crucial part of the setup and should be as accurate as possible. We need to ensure the open string and the 12th fret notes are exactly the same pitch. To adjust this, we will hit the open string and then the string push down at the 12th fret to see if it is sharp or flat. If it is sharp at the 12th fret, you will need to adjust the saddle back to compensate. If the note is flat, you will need to adjust the saddle forwards towards the bridge pickup. It takes a bit of back and forth, but take your time with this step. This can make or break how the notes sound when playing above the 12th or so frets. Here are the final positions of the saddles, and most setups follow this 3x3 three three step up pattern. Alright, so we just finished the setup, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, test how we did. So, what I like to do after a setup, or even after just, you know, doing a fret level and things like that, is go up, up and down the neck, hit all the frets, all the notes and everything, just to make sure there's no dead spots and that we did our fret level correctly. So. Um, what the process is that I like to do is I just do a chromatic scale and I just go up and down the neck and uh, let me show you how I do it. Just like that and I hit all the notes. Um, I use a pretty consistent um, medium to hard pressure just so I can really dig into the notes and see how it's going to sound when someone's really playing aggressively and things like that just to make sure there's uh, no issues. So let's continue.
All right, as you can see, no dead frets. Everything sounds great, is coming through clear. Um, and this is with pretty low action, so I really like my action pretty low, as low as I can get it. Right now, this is set up to about uh, 1.25 millimeters at the high E, and about, I believe, 1.5 uh, millimeters on the low E. Um, I don't mind a little bit of buzzing. You can probably hear it when I was playing it. Um, just a little bit of buzzing. That really doesn't translate through an amp, especially if you're using distortion and things like that. Um, you're not going to hear that. So um, I really like to get my action as low as possible just so I can play better. So uh, I don't really have the hand strength and things like that for um, you know higher action and higher gauge strings. So I like my action pretty low with uh, lighter strings. I feel I play better and it's more comfortable for me. So um, along that topic, just with uh, fret buzz and things like that, um, sometimes it's inevitable. Uh, you have metal frets and metal strings vibrating on top of them. So um, to eliminate fret buzz completely, you probably have to have your action pretty high and things like that uh, and adapt your playing. So um, I always try to convince my customers, if you want a little bit more action out of it, lower the strings a bit and deal with some of the buzzing because most of the time uh, you're not going to hear that. So, um, But this is good. Uh, I think it plays great and um, I'm really happy with the setup. So, um, Another thing you can do after you do a fret level or you set up a guitar for the first time to check the fret level um, along with the chromatic scale I just showed you, you can also test some of the bends to make sure everything's level across the strings. So you can just you know pick a couple notes. You can even do this you know all along the fretboard but just give it a bend, bend it up Oops, hitting the wrong string there. You can see, doesn't fret out. So it bends up, doesn't fret out, um, and sounds great. So I am very happy with this, and uh, yeah, we are done with the setup. This plays great. Another thing you can do too, to check the intonation, is you can hit like a C chord, and then do the octave. There you go. You can hear. It sounds great. Just a quick test you can do just to make sure the intonation is pretty much in the ballpark of uh, you know where it's supposed to be. So, um, but I'm very happy with this. I think this thing plays great, and uh, yeah, we are pretty much finished with this. Now that we are finished with the setup, let's cut off the excess string lengths coming from the locking tuner posts. I like to cut as close as possible to prevent any sharp ends from protruding out. I have been cut by many strings that were not trimmed correctly. And that just about wraps up this episode. We have finally reached the end of this build and in the next episode we're going to see the finished result and hear how it sounds. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the Augment Guitars YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.